McKee. I founded a company called StratFit, which stands for Strategic Fitness. It's a fitness technology company, and I'm doing both hardware and uh, software. And today I'm going to present what I think is going to be a revolutionary um, digital technology for training, uh, programming, organization, and implementation in the gym. And the booklets that I printed out for you there, uh, I'm going to kind of get right into that. I understand most people in here are probably exercise science students, and uh, Steve had told me that you were um, just very recently getting into training programming, so I think this is going to be a very good uh, discussion that we can have today. And that's why I printed these, was so I could, before I show you my digital system, which I think you could all could use to really learn programming and get right into it, um, I want to make sure that we understand all the same, we're using the same terms. Probably a lot of these terms, if you're into exercise science, you've heard of them. But I like to, uh, what I've tried to do with StratFit is to make everything very comprehensive and very explicitly defined. So, because in any scientific process, um, the more explicit and the more um, clear we are with our terminology, the more effective the process will be. Um, and uh, so that's, what, that's why I laid this out for you like this. And uh, a little bit of my background before I get started. Um, I am certified by Westside Barbell as a special strength coach and certified by USA Weightlifting as a sports strength coach. Uh, but kind of the most um, kind of important part of my background is through studying specifically to get certified by Westside, um, I had to delve really deeply into Eastern European training science. And that's where most of um, the methodology uh, for training like high level athletes came from in the 20th century. So through studying that, uh, that that's kind of where all the, the theory came from. So I have made it sort of my purpose in life to create an applied mathematical science uh, from that theory or theoretical knowledge and eventually to make a digital product uh, and then also training equipment to go along with it. So that's, that's where I'm at and I think I'm going to be able to give you all a lot of very interesting information as exercise science students today. So uh, let me go ahead and start right with the paperwork that we have there and we can go ahead and define uh, what the training variables are so that when I go into my sheets and show you how this technology works, you'll understand the words that I'm using there. So. Um, I break down the, the variables for tr um, all physical training into uh, essentials, elementals, fundamentals, and foundationals. Uh, and it's very important, like the reason that I'm using those terms is what's essential and what's elemental and, and so on. Uh, one of the uh, essential um, variables of training is the volitional momentum that the lifter applies to whatever the apparatus is. Uh, for most commonly the barbell or dumbbells or kettlebells. Um, so volitional momentum basically means how fast you're trying to move. So if you're not trying to move as fast as you possibly can, the volitional momentum is not 100%. Now that doesn't ha necessarily translate directly to velocity because with a really heavy weight, the momentum, uh, the, the velocity might be kind of slow while the momentum could be high because the force is high. Uh, so. With my system that I'm going to present to you today, all the calculations that I'm making are based on, is taking it for granted that someone is applying 100% volitional momentum. So, uh, you know, some, sometimes in bodybuilding and different type of techniques like that, they like to do timed reps and make them kind of slow, like, you know, maybe like a four second rep or something like that. But the system I'm having now and what's most important for training athletes for sports uh, is going to be everything needs to be developing power. So we're going to want to do full volitional momentum with most of the repetitions. But I just wanted to have that defined before I moved on. And then the really two elemental variables of training are the intensity and the amount of training. Intensity refers to um, your percentage of maximum that you're applying in the exercise. So for weight training, that's obviously your 1RM or your pers PR, whatever anybody wants to call it, training maximum. And then for uh, running or cycling or swimming or distance type events, it's going to be your maximal speed for a certain distance. Normally like you know 40 yard dash, 50 meters, 100 meters. And the amount is basically the reps, or reps when we're talking about weight training. If we're talking about running, cycling, and so on, we're talking about a distance. That has to do with the amount. The combination of the intensity and the amount, the way that we basically play those two variables uh, off on each other across time, with the volitional momentum that we apply in exercises, that is, uh, on, a, on the most basic level, that's what determines the outcome of a training program. So that's what you're going to want to know when you decide to work with an athlete. Those are the three main things that you have to control over time that's going to determine your success. And the fundamentals, I'm not necessarily going to go through all these, but the, there's training units that we have. So the biggest one is a macro cycle. That's basically like a year of training. And then you have periods, muscle cycles. That's kind of roughly like a month, but it can be up to 10 weeks. 
and a micro cycle that's roughly like a week. Now in my system right now, all micro cycles are one week. They're set up so it has to be that way. Seventh day is always off to recover to begin the next micro cycle. And uh, micro cycles, the way you could define really uh, that is it's a group of workouts that all are geared towards achieving a common aim. So you're laying those workouts out and all the means within them to uh, achieve a certain cr uh, objective purpose by the end of it. And a mesocycle is a group of those that has a larger um, pur purpose to it. So, and then uh, of course workout and then uh, an activity. That's what I'm calling an activity is like squat, four sets of eight or whatever. So uh, that's just, an activity, I use that term so that way when I expand my system into other non-lifting sort of uh, events, um, it will be, the, the terminology won't be so rigid. And then event, and I'm calling an event like what most people call an exercise, but in order for the system to be able to uh, move over into the running and so on, I use the term event rather than exercise because a lot of time with running, training, track and field, we talk about events like 100 meter dash, 200 meter dash, so on and so forth. And then uh, the, uh, the modality, each kind of event has a, a movement modality, so it can be static or dynamic, you know, like uh, uh, hold it, holding and doing like isometric sort of exercises, and then most what we're doing the gym is going to be active where you're actually moving and then I'm not going to go through all those things there it's a little bit tedious but I put it there for your information because you can take these papers with you obviously and then now a foundational uh, variable of training this is what this that I've really kind of pioneered in the field and this is what if you can learn how to control this this is how you can make very precise training programs and that's what I'm what is the internal load and internal load is basically a uh, it's a more kind of training uh, exact way of saying stress. So you're applying a stress onto the organism across time and uh, dosed in a certain way in order to cause a very uh, specific sort of adaptation at the end of that. Usually, you know, you're, you're trying to prepare them for a competitive season, an event, and so on and so forth. So, and the, the load is a qualitative and quantitative combination of the intensity and amount that I spoke of earlier. And that's gonna become much more clear when I show you the spreadsheet. So, but um, I have a way to um, calculate the internal load, which is proprietary to me. Um, I use a lot of other people's work to come up with it, but I have a very um, methodical way of defining that so that we can measure essentially anything in any training for any sport. Uh, and that starts with what I've called the abstract load. And uh, does everyone here know of Prilipin's chart? If you're an exercise science student, or does anyone? Okay, there's a picture of it there in the book. That uh, A.S. Prilipin was the uh, Russian weightlifting coach uh, who produced a lot of medal winners in the Olympics in like the 1970s and the 1980s. And he uh, ran through like a like what was a you know kind of first generation computer system back then, all the training manuals of the highest rated uh, weightlifters, um, well actually hundreds of very highly rated weightlifters from Eastern Europe across f since they started taking records like in the early 20th century early 20th century up to the time when he was doing it he run all the competitor results through that and all the training manuals and came up with this table for what is how many reps per set should be done uh, optimally and maximally with each intensity range and how many total reps should be done in the workout so uh, I basically used that table and, it, and made an equation based on it to calculate the training load because what Prilipin was organizing there was the intensity and the amount. So I created one formula that combines them into one value. Uh, and then we can use that basically as a uh, kind of measuring stick for all sorts of different sizes of training units from sets to activities to workouts to days to microcycles all the way up to the training year we can use that value to um, organize the dosage of training. And uh, let me get to that. So now something that's gonna, now I'm gonna get very practical into what I'm gonna be presenting uh, with the sheet. So I came up with a training variables grading system to grade, uh, basically to put like a uh, descriptive kind of term onto the intensity, amount, and load. So that way, as you're learning those, the actual numbers and the mathematics of that system, you can actually use these words because with words you, it, there's going to be a little more, more faster comprehension. So I label uh, the intensity, the amount, and the load with into different ranges with very light, light, moderate, moderately heavy, heavy, submaximal, and maximal. And those terms can define uh, 
the, like the, how heavy the weight will feel to the athlete and the, it, just picking it up once, you know, how heavy it will feel in their hands. That's a very interesting thing to know or something that's, you must know when you're laying out the training program. And uh, the reps per set, we can use that, uh, this system to, to define the reps per set. Maximum would be like as many reps as possible or an all out set. Minimal would be like very light reps for like recovery probably. And then we can also use that, those terms to label like if a, if a workout or an activity or a whole training week is, is very light or light or it's heavy or what it is. So you can use these terms to see on a high level uh, what the training program is looking as you design it. Um, so you can see there right below that I have, I, I put the intensity ranges and what I, how I have labeled the, gr um, the grades on them. So less than 49% intensity uh, I'm calling very light. So in it, for instance, if you can bench press 100 pounds, anything less than 49 pounds is labeled very light. Um, anything between 49 and 56 pounds would be light. Anything between 57 and 67 would be moderate. Between 68 and 80 would be moderately heavy. Between 81 and 91 pounds would be heavy. Uh, between 92 and 97 would be considered submaximal, and 98 to 99 and 100% would be considered maximal. So that table there describes that. And then um, I put below there, a, a lot of you might be um, familiar with the rating of perceived effort system that a lot of powerlifters use. I'm in training, a lot of CrossFit people use it as well. So I put how those reps grades uh, relate to the classic rating of, rating of perceived effort system there in that t in next table. Uh, and then below that, uh, let's see what we have here. Okay, that shows the internal loading. So if you've, I know I'm kind of going very fast here, but um, the, uh, uh, if you kind of understand what the loading means is that combination of, of reps and intensity, that table there, you can see how that relates to the grading system as well. So roughly speaking, like a, uh, a, like a, a training day, I'm labeling as maximal if it's loading is close to like a weightlifting or power, powerlifting meat load. And I've calculated those, those loads myself and have, have them um, on tables and they're part of this system as well. And then um, like 50% uh, of what Prolipin considered an optimal activity is what I consider like a, um, that would be uh, a maximal kind of set of, of reps there. So there's a logical system behind that. Now, uh, this is something, this is probably a little bit more direct, directly comprehensible um, area here. So we have uh, the physiological abilities and attributes of training and performance. So I have made the attempt to very clearly and comprehensively define the abilities that we train in training and that you need an athlete to manifest on the field of play for success. And so on a high level, those come down to speed, speed strength, power, strength speed, strength as, a, as maximum strength, uh, muscle mass, which that type of training will also um, covers like uh, moderately heavy and heavy kind of endurance training, and what I call burn, which is uh, training for delaying the onset of blood lactate accumulation and burning a lot of calories in training and having kind of low intensity muscular endurance. So on a high level, when you're in the gym, you're training one of those abilities. And knowing what, uh, which of those abilities is kind of the most key or the most crucial for an athlete's success in the sport that you're training them for is very important so you can organize the trainings to make sure that ability is peaked and maintained across the competitive period um, for your athlete. And I'm going to show you shortly how to do that with my system very directly. Um, so now we're getting into methods of training. There's sort of two fundamental uh, training methods when we talk about weight training. There's dynamic effort method and the repetition effort method. The dynamic effort method refers to moving the barbell with maximal volitional momentum that I talked about earlier, moving the bar as fast as you possibly can, and probably doing a low number of reps so that fatigue doesn't have a negative effect on the speed or the power output. And the repetition method, that's kind of what people normally think of in the gym. It's doing, you know, say, uh, you know, your set of doing like 75% by eight reps. That's the repetition method. So usually that's used for building uh, muscle mass or for developing endurance. Uh, and so, so like the repetition method is the method you would use to develop mass and burn and the dynamic effort method you would use to develop speed strength, power and strength speed. 
Um, and to make a little clearer on the, on the definition, excuse me, speed strength refers to it's uh, dis the displaying a significant amount of strength with a considerable amount of, or s excuse me, a uh, significant amount of speed with uh, a considerable amount of strength. So the way that looks like in sports is it's kind of like you could look at it as a shot put throw or like uh, it has a lot to do with jumping, that kind of explosive sort of activity. And power obviously is like your maximum rate of doing work. And strength speed is kind of the inverse of speed, of, uh, speed strength. So it's displaying a um, high level of strength with a considerable amount of speed. So the way to think about that is like doing like a deadlift with like 70% intensity, you know, it's gonna move faster than your one RM, but it's not gonna move as fast as like a power clean. So that's, that's strength speed. And each one of those is kind of, it's the reserve ability for the, the ability prior to it. So like your strength speed level is your reserve for your power. So like if an athlete is requiring power, like say in a sport like football or jumping in basketball and whatnot, um, as you begin to fatigue, your power becomes more dependent on your strength speed development. So in the gym, you wanna make sure that you always maintain a certain amount of strength speeds for when the athlete becomes fatigued and the power becomes dependent on it. Same thing with your speed strength becomes somewhat dependent on your power as you begin to fatigue. These are just things to uh, keep in mind, you know, when you're going through programming. And um, so right below there, there's a, uh, if you see this one, yeah, a lot of, I think you're all on that page. Whoop, YouTube coming on here. Um, so uh, th that table there, it shows the different abilities and then it shows the method that you use to train them. That's this one right here, you're all on that page, I think. Uh, and then it shows the intensity range that corresponds to training that ability. So let's look at speed strength. You would use the dynamic effort method, uh, very light or light intensity, and you would use moderate light or very light repetitions per set to develop that. For power, you use, again use dynamic effort method, moderate or moderately heavy weights or intensity, and moderate light and very light uh, reps per set. For strength speed, you're gonna use a heavy intensity range moderate, light, and very light repetitions per set. And for strength, as maximum strength, you're gonna use sub-maximal, maximal, maximal um, and uh, also heavy intensity. And you're gonna use, the, strength is kind of the fulcrum ability between the power and the endurance base. So it's the fundamental ability to all of them. So with strength, the weights are always gonna be pretty heavy. So you can really use almost any rep range with, as long as you're using a heavy intensity to develop strength. And mass, you're gonna to use, to develop muscle mass, the repetition method, you're going to use moderately heavy or moderate weights uh, with maximal, submaximal heavy or moderately heavy uh, w reps per set. And same thing with burn, you're gonna use light or very light weights, but you're gonna use very extensive uh, reps per set. Um, and then, yeah, I put that below there as well. And I've, another f um, something that's pr uh, proprietary to me, a concept is, what I call in training potency. So for each one of those abilities that I mentioned, um, I have calculations when I enter a certain number of reps per set with a certain intensity. I have calculations to show what the, the potency of that set would be for developing that ability. And uh, the way that I do that is by estimating the velocity of the barbell with that intensity. And from that I can you know figure out what the speed strength would be, the power and the strength speed. And then, uh, the extensivity of the set, how many reps they actually do, that would uh, tell me the potency for the mass and the burn. So that's a very good, um, that's a very useful tool uh, for, I think for, you know, students that are learning about uh, training programming, because you can really see with these different combinations of sets and reps, exactly what you're developing in training. And so I'm gonna go ahead from there, basically that's kind of a fast run through of that booklet there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start showing you what I've created using those principles. So if anyone has any question, just uh, if I'm going too fast or you didn't catch something, just stop me and let me know. I'm trying to cover quite a bit of material here. Um, so this tool right here, this is the Adaptational Potency Calculator. It uh, calculates the potencies that I just um, discussed. So the way that it works, you can kind of follow me here on this. Um, First, you will choose uh, the method that you want to train, or that you want to use for training. So dynamic effort method, repetition method, and I also have the load there for recovery purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on dynamic effort for now. That then uh, will set the um, abilities that I can choose. So for dynamic effort, 
we can either train speed strength, power, or strength. I'm just going to change it to strength just to make things change, or excuse me, we're going to change it to power. So then you notice that the grade uh, change there to moderately heavy, because for power, I have to choose either moderately heavy or moderate intensity range to, to train it. And then once I, ch I'm going to go ahead and change it to moderate. And then that gives me the moderate intensity range. So I can choose between 67 and 57 percent uh, and to train power. I'm going to put 60. And then that also, the, um, the ability that I'm training also sets the reps uh, per set grade, which I've got on light right now. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it on light. Or I'll change it to very light just to, for, to show you. So that gives me down to four reps. So you can see here all the potencies. So, so to de for developing speed strength, 60 reps, or 60% 60, um, 60 intensity times four reps is 95% potent for developing speed strength. That's like that snappiness on a punch or something like that. And it's 92% effective for developing power, 69 for strength speed, and you can see uh, the rest of them there. And on the primary adaptation, that I made that cell just search for the largest value and then labeled the set as a speed strength set because it's the highest potency. And we can do lots of different things with this and see, you know, uh, we could change the repetition method and then I can change it to muscle mass and then I can change moderately heavy. Let's put it on 75 and then let's turn these up to heavy. So then, I, then if, if I do 75% by seven reps, the, the primary adaptation is going to be muscle mass. You can see that that's 83% potent there. Now, if I turned it up a little bit more, you know, made to eight reps, the mass goes up a little bit as well. The, the strength uh, potency goes up. I can even change it to, I can change it to like maximal, and that's going to give me 10 reps. Now you see the potencies went up even a little bit more. So. This tool, I'm going to, uh, if anyone, any of you are interested, like after I leave, I'm going to give you access to this system so you can kind of play around with it. I think it's, it's something I, that I, I made this because I dreamed that I would have had it 15 years ago, you know, when I was learning because I was like, it was all very intimidating to me when I first started learning like what trains what and like, you know, like I was just always into bodybuilding when I was younger. So power, I was like, what does that even mean in training, you know? But then when I, as I started to learn it, I was like, well, somehow we need to come up with, you know, a mathematical tool and a digital tool that can show you what you're training in training. So uh, now then I'm going to go ahead and show you from there. I'm going to jump into my training design and implementation system that I have in this same sheet. So if we jump here to design, this system I've created for designing long-term training programs and this system has uh, the places for 20 exercises per week and it can program up to 26 weeks or half of a year. So this first kind of, I call these things blocks, like tra training uh, design blocks. And vertically, those are organized into a microcycle or one training week. And so I can come in here and like with the potencies that we were just discussing, I can make those choices here. I can choose repetition, dynamic effort method, deload. Click whichever one that I want. I'm going to change it to dynamic effort, and I'm going to change it to power. So now it's now it's it's giving me you know the same flow that we just had there on the uh, the training potency calculator is here, but this is actually creating a um, a training activity for the day. So I would I would first of all pick my my intensity grade, moderate or moderately heavy for power. Then go ahead and choose my intensity from the drop down. Choose my rep per set grade from, you know, it's, it's limiting me to moderate light and very light to make sure that I stay within the power range. And then uh, choose the exact reps per set and then the number of times I want to repeat that set. So you may want to do it, the set more than once. It has kind of four, what I would call mini activities here, you know, like uh, one, two, three, four. And you can either just make them one set a piece or you can do multiple sets. And then from there, it will show me the, uh, the primary adaptation of each one of the sets and the level of the internal load for that set of that mini activity. And then this one right here shows the uh, loading level of the entire activity. Down below right here, if you see that, that this is kind of like in this square with the day, that's showing me the current loading level for that training day. And then right below that, it's showing me the current, 
the current loading level for the entire microcycle of that training week. So as you're building a training program for an athlete, you can know the order, the, the magnitude of the training load at every level as you're designing a training program. So, and then if I come down here, I can put another exercise here and then just choose the day, one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, day seven is always off and a microcycle is the recovery day to start the, the next one. So you just choose that there. And then if there's quite a bit of functions I built into this that like once you choose like a day, the next activity, if you change the day, the next activity will recognize that as well and so on. And you can just, if w once I give it to you to use, I have instructions as well, but you can just copy this thing down right here and just paste it in place. And then, sorry, it's a little slow, but, and then it will, you can start building on from there. And same thing all the way up here. Now I went ahead and built a, like a, uh, sorry, this is the one I want to show you. This one, I went ahead and built a like 26 week. I just put one exercise, Olympic back squat. That's like full depth squat. And I made a progression that's going from muscle mass to kind of a combination of muscle mass and strength development, neurological strength meaning, and then into strength speed and then into power and then into speed strength. So that would be a good example if you had like a half year uh, time frame that you could prepare an athlete like for a competitive season you would that'd be probably the way you'd want to go you know developing more endurance and mass farther away from the competitive season getting closer to power and and speed strength type development as the season as you get close to the season especially for all kind of ball players and a lot of the college athletes that you would be dealing with so you can see here i have i just you can kind of look as i go along pretty soon you'll notice there's a deload week right there so i did like three what i did on this one was like mostly three weeks kind of the program going up and then the fourth week is a deload to recover and then starting over with a new uh, muscle cycle after that. And you can see as I get over here, now the red starts to come in because red is the number or the color that I use to uh, show that strength is being developed. So you see the program is going from, it was all kind of orange, we're just developing muscle mass or muscular endurance and now it's beginning more and more to go towards strength and like this week here, uh, week number three is um, or microcycle number three. It's all strength development. Then we have another uh, deload, and now this entire muscle cycle, all these weeks now are becoming strength development. So we're just progressively making the training more neural and more performance based as we move towards the competitive season. Um, so with this, I'm going to keep on going over actually. So now you see we start getting the the purple coming into play. So the strength speed being developed now. And as we keep going now, there's blue. So there's now we're developing some power as well. So we're moving more and more towards power to peak their power potential for the competitive season. Here we're getting to where it's almost all strength, speed, and power development. Uh, that's just a good way. I just wanted to illustrate to you like how you could use this sheet to do this over time, you know, and really see how it all lays out. Um, now, to give you a bird's eye view of the training program that you're developing, I have several analytics sheets. So this one is the adaptations. So you can see here, this is just searching in my design sheet and finding what the adaptation for each one of the sets or mini activities is and what the whole activity is. So you see here, this one is Olympic back squat. That's what we were just looking at. So here I can actually get a bird's eye view of, okay, across time, here's the weeks, one, two, three, four, and the, you could put any competitions in here so you can know what, when the competitions are happening for the athlete. And, um, I thought that, yeah, that, and that will show the dates as well. So you're going to know, okay, here's the, what, what ability is being developed across the calendar. And so this you can just kind of see with your eyes as the colors are changing. And every one of these white ones is where a recovery week, deload week was. You can see how we're going from the more vegetative structural kind of training to the more he really heavy strength to the more power base because it's becoming more and more blue, you know. So this will give you a very easy way to see that. And then the next analytics sheet is the training loads. Uh, so that, again, it, that's, that's telling you the level of stress that you're putting on the athlete, regardless of the abilities that you're training in that week. So that's very important because if, uh, if there were some competition dates in there, you'd want to be ensuring when you go over and look that the load isn't too high around the competition because they're going to need to you know, have, be fully prepared and well rested uh, you know, to, in order for, to manifest their potential on the field. You know, so 
uh, this, this allows you to see that very clearly. And uh, once your eyes kind of learn to use, you know, kind of subconsciously learn these colors, you'll be able to very quickly see, okay, here's how the program is looking. You know, you're going to know exactly what it's doing to the athlete across time. And I kind of just put some heavy loads in here or there. There's one maximal lift right there. You know, uh, it, it gives you, allows you to very easily see, okay, here's where the very heavy loads are going to be. Maybe you know, just with your own methodology, I want to put a maximal load in this amount of time before a certain competition. This allows you to do that very easily, you know. I know uh, in, there's a book called Managing the Training of Weightlifters that I've read like several times. And he says the last maximal load should be done uh, about 13 to 15 days before an important competition. So that meaning like you're probably still going to have some of the neural gain that far away, but most of the fatigue will be gone. So that's just, you know, some ins and outs to know. Again, I just made this so that as, as people learn programming, they can very easily apply their knowledge, you know. And then uh, let me show you, this one is very interesting, adaptational loads. So this sheet actually combines those two things. So it shows here, again, we're on Olympic back squat, the first uh, week or microcycle, it says mass, moderately heavy load. So that means it's a moderately heavy load that's training, developing muscle mass. And, and it's kind of combining the colors here as well. So you can click over here and see that and see, okay, here's how my loads are looking with my abilities, you know. And then I've also shown the intensity progression. So this just shows the average intensity of the work sets across time. So you can also get an idea of Here's how intense it's going to be for the athlete exactly across time. Do I have something else? Oh, yeah, and then metrics as well. So this one will show, well, let me, excuse me, let me just step back and show you the training sheet. So the design sheet fills in this sheet automatically. So this is what I use to train people in the gym. With the, so I'll make the long-term program how I want it to look, and then I open up this sheet like on my phone or on a tablet in the gym. And I just have to put their training maximum for the exercise, so let's say, or 1RM, we can just call it. So let's say your, your Olympic back squat maximum is 100 pounds. I'll put 100 pounds there. This automatically calculates all of the weights for me based on the intensities that I put in the design sheet. Then uh, you just enter the exact reps that they were able to do. And then this thing right here means um, how many more reps are possible. So I like to, after a set, I normally just do it after the first set, but you could do it after every set, is ask them how many more reps could you do if I pushed you to maximal. And with that, if you put that answer in that cell, that will regulate the training maximum to make sure it's correct for the day and make sure it's correct for them, you know, at the time. So, and, uh, and then this, this is just telling you everything that you put in the design sheet, and then you just execute it. The final training maximum, after all the sets are done, you went through that question with them, it gives you the final training maximum for the day, and that's going to populate the initial training maximum for the same exercise the next week. That becomes a new initial one. And then um, what I like to do is at the, after, like I'll show you here, when a new mesocycle starts, so right here, and these things populate automatically as well, uh, it recognizes that a deload was the last week, so it recognizes it's starting a new mesocycle. Um, I like to a lot of times put in here a, um, well, my, I got to fix that. It's not working. So I found a bug here. But what should be there is I can enter a manual training max increase after, uh, uh, to start a new muscle cycle. So if I'm guessing, okay, maybe I think the athlete got 3% stronger or something like that, or 5%, I can put that in that cell and then that will increase the training max to start the new mesocycle a little bit. Mesocycle, again, is like a training month or six weeks or something like that. So, and then this, this uh, sheet, this training sheet, will just, auto, will just regulate it all the way across all of these weeks. And see, these ones down here below are just blanks because until I actually fill in these these blocks in the design sheet, it just stays blank. It fills in automatically when I build those and paste those blocks into place and enter all the variables. Now, from that training design sheet, I have a metrics, uh, uh, just an actual metrics um, analytics sheet. So this shows the progression of the training maximum across time. Obviously, it just all says 100 because this is just a theoretical thing I just created. But if the training maximum is, 
is going up and down or whatever it's doing according to the athlete's actual performance, you can see how that training maximum progresses across the 26 week period. Um, it also shows the heaviest weight lifted in the session, uh, which is, you know, that's pretty interesting because I think if you start training collegiate athletes, um, over time, I think we can take in a lot of this data and start kind of um, getting very predictive with our, with our models. Because it's like if we see that, let's say, um, I'm just gonna totally be hypothetical here. Let's just say that we notice that like when basketball players, their heaviest weight lifted is a certain weight, uh, a certain amount of time before games, we can start getting very, you know, exact with make, you know, where we're having, when we're having them lift certain weights, you know, to really peak the strength in the legs for the games or something like that, you know. So that's what that's for there, the heaviest weight lifted uh, analytic. And then below that shows the resistance grade of that weight. Uh, and then the total tonnage. So that's the total tons they would have lifted in the workout. This sums that all automatically. So all of the work sets uh, times the reps done times the weight. So it adds that all up because that's another very um, thing we could use for, you know, we could collect all that data over time. If we had a lot of athletes, we were using this, we can mine the data and say like, okay, looks like this amount of tonnage is causing too much fatigue across the period of time for a certain athlete. Or we might be able to see that uh, they need to lift a certain amount of tonnage to have success as well across the period of time. And um, yeah, so those are all the analytics that I had there. Uh, so that is, that's my system. So I tried to, I wanted to leave about 20 minutes and I'm pretty close. Uh, if anyone had any questions or you wanted me to like do anything with this to show you anything, uh, go, sorry, I looked at her first before I looked at you, I'll get you next. What if, is this only weight based training or can it be used for like swimming, like training for triathlons? Um, it, right now, all the exercises, that's a very good question. All the exercises are weight training in this, so you can use it to for the weight training for a triathlete or a swimmer. Um, I ha just with the science that I've created around weight training, I have went just as far into organizing and calculating loading and all these power and all these things for running, swimming, cycling. Uh, but I don't have it in this one yet because I wanted to. My this is my initial like beta product, so I wanted to just get this out there because. Um, uh, I don't want to like flood people with yeah. like, you know what I mean? So it's like, I, I'm kind of probably already doing that a little bit, <laughs> but uh, um, I think I'm going to do that like in the next one. I think the next iteration where I'm going to bring in jumps and throws. So all types of jumping training, uh, throwing, like throwing kettlebells, mm -hmm. throwing medicine balls. That's a really good thing. Does anybody, you, you ever throw kettlebells? You can't do it in the gym. You got to go to like the field and then the, I gotta, it's got to be a field where you can leave divots because the kettlebell is going to hit the ground. <laughs> But that's really good uh, power training, is just to take a kettlebell and like throw it as hard as you can. You know, it's very good for athletes, baseball players, softball players to hit the ball, like that kind of swing. You can take a kettlebell and like, grab it and just throw it. Um, so I'm gonna put jumps and throws in next. And then after that, I'm gonna put in running and cycling and swimming. So then at that point, we'll have all the fundamental things. So I'm actually gonna show you, uh, I, I forgot to show this and then you ask it. So in the event, cell right there it says Olympic back squat I've got in the drop down 70 exercises here and those are all the major exercises obviously of weightlifting and powerlifting snatch clean and jerk variations deadlift squat bench press and so on and then quite a few um, bodybuilding machines at the gyms because these are the ones that right now I can very exactly calculate the training load so from both it would just add on to this. You can lapse, because what I have to do is I have to, uh, I have to make a distance-based one, and then the, to calculate the load, see for swimming, the distance is sort of shorter. Cycling, the distance is longer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, just because the physics of it. So um, I have to figure out all of that, and then I'm gonna make one where you have to put, where, where you put, you can pick swimming, running. So it would be a block. I wanna make the block just like this. Mm -hmm. So it actually, you can fit it in that's my big picture kind of thing is like where you can actually just put whatever block you want wherever with whatever type of training for cross training and all that. And then like you'd have to do the parachutes that you add onto the back of swimmers. And yeah, we can, yeah, figure that out, you know, because all that's going to add onto the load. That's going to change the intensity. That's actually what you're doing there is changing the swimming intensity. Um, 
and like inc the inclination. I've already done like uh, running. I broke. I kind of did with climbing at the same time because that's all the same thing, sort of. It's just you know, here's running, 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 kind of crawling, crawling up. Like you're, you're climbing. You know what I'm saying? So like they're they're kind of on the same scale. So I put running and climbing together actually, but I mean obviously it it changes according to the grade. So. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I have the math for all of those. I'm not going to open it because it would look absolutely insane if I started you right now. <laughs> it's like, I got to get it all organized. It took me a long time to get all this organized because I had this sheet here, this sheet here, this sheet here. So um, I want to do everything. And I also eventually want to um, put skill, like just skill training into it. Like agility? Agility, uh, yeah, or just kind of whatever like the skill coach wants to call it, you know? Like, even if it's kind of mental, because there's a mental load on you. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, if you think, uh, I'm sure you're all in college, right? You've studied really hard, right? There's a point when you just, you get fatigued from thinking, right? Sometimes you even sleep harder after that than you do from, like, physical work. So uh, that's a little more abstract, but I also want to, I want to work all of that into that, because as we're training an athlete for something, all of that stress is accumulating. The quality of the stresses are different, but they're all they all fuse and it becomes sort of a, a, a part of the load that's going on the athlete. So we want to work all of that in. The way that I'm doing it, I want to do that is like to, to estimate the fatigue from like a purely skill session. Like let's say, like a skill session, like a sports practice, that is a lot of agility training and, and some kind of speed strength, you're jumping and all that. But we're not, generally the coach isn't counting every little thing that happens like reps. So the way I'm looking at it is like uh, stuff that we can't directly count in like reps or distance, because distance again is running and reps is weightlifting. We could estimate the fatigue based on like, a, like an RPE rating, rating of perceived effort from the athlete. And then we can estimate kind of the effectiveness or the, um, the uh, intensity of the session based on like a coach's rating of the performance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm tr right now that's the way I'm looking at integrating that. So. Yeah, long story short, I've thought of mostly everything, and that, that's coming. Right now, I kind of want to give this to everyone, get that going, and then expand on from there. So, sorry, I got long-winded. Um, my question was, I know you said that this was a beta design, mm -hmm. but have you brought this to, like, different businesses and gyms to see how it would incorporate with their systems and how they run things? Um, I have talked to a few trainers, like, uh, honestly, like, I'm still trying to poke the bugs out of it. Like I was at 12 hours on it yesterday. <laughs> Cause it was, I was like, I thought it was all good to go. Then yesterday I was like, let me just make this one squat. And then I started messing, I was like, oh crap, I got some stuff I gotta fix. So I'm kind of trying to get some of the bugs out before I go to actual businesses with it, you know? Um, but I've talked to some of my friends who are strength and conditioning coaches. I'm, I'm, I'm from Kansas City actually. So I have a lot of uh, contacts around Kansas City and the, like boxing and the mixed martial arts training guys. So uh, um, coaches and all. So like I'm uh, working with a lot of them to give me feedback on it. They're tr they're trying to like basically make programs, seeing how it would peak someone for a fight or whatever. So that's what I'm doing. And have you thought about pricing for like once this is set in stone, how much it would cost for the gym to use it? Yeah, we're looking at. Uh, so I mean, if we if we go kind of into the the big pictures, really what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to somehow get use this one as my kind of pr market validation product, you know, proof of concept. And then I can see uh, with, Go with Google Sheets, uh, believe it or not, it's like I'm breaking Google with this thing. So sometimes, like when I'm sitting there copying this, like I spent Saturday, all I did was sit there and like, I was trying to fix these. So once I fix one, I got to copy it 26 times 20, right? So, so, like, so I'm sitting there and I was like, it's Google freezes like every two times. And I have to reset them, shut it, open it again. You know, and I'm like, okay, this, I'm kind of limited on the technology with all the computations I'm trying to do. So I'm wanting to just kind of, with this, I'm not wanting to go too far, I think, with the sheet system. I really want to just validate it with it, and then we're gonna need to make an actual native app, okay. you know? Okay. So that, I think before I really try to expand a lot, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do like 45 a month subscription on my website, so with a paywall and then, a, you know, password and get in. Then you could just copy this for as many athletes as you wanted, and then, uh, that's the model right now because there really is no way to count how many times somebody copies it. If we make them a drive, they can just train 100 people if they want. And then, um, and then do like a deals where if it's like three or more people come together, we give a discount. And then if it's like a university, a discount, obviously. 
and that kind of thing. And then, you know, as I actually have some, I have quite a bit, uh, uh, bit of good, pretty big contacts in the fitness industry, and they're all just telling me like they've they've heard what I have to say, but now they're like, okay, now just prove proof of concept, and you're gonna we can get you somewhere. But so that's what I got to do with this, basically, you know. And it's also it's it's me kind of working out a lot of the functionality before I start working with a coding team, you know. So anybody else? Yeah. In the process you calculate that the potency is based off your an athlete's one rep max, or is it? Uh, the potency, no, because it doesn't. Uh, well, let me tell you how that works. I'm gonna open that again on the tools. Um, did I lose my tools? Okay. Uh, so. There, um, now I'm going to get uh, pretty specific here. With, so like uh, there's a book called Super Training. If you're into exercise science, I highly recommend anybody gets that book, read it. Read. I read it 10 times. That's how I came up with most of this stuff. So he has a, uh, it, they tested like hundreds of uh, highly qualified powerlifters and weightlifters on squats and with different percentages of their 1RM. And they made a graph that shows the curve for vo the velocity curve for lifting with different intensities. So it's obviously with like about 20%, you're at like maximal velocity. Below 20% doesn't really increase. But then as you go up to like, you know, one RM, the velocity reaches its minimal, right? But the force is at its maximal. So I, um, he didn't actually have like the equation or the, the polynomial that was behind that curve. So that was, a, I really tediously drew it out on graph paper and like made the polynomial using my curve fit. So then with that, I could say, okay, here's the uh, percentage of maximum velocity with every intensity. So then that then allowed me to figure out what would be the maximal power. So the, uh, I figured out the power, the, um, the max, what would be maximal power, which is 70% by one rep. And then I have a, a way of calculating the strength potency is based on, it's just something that I came up with that made sense. It's like, it's the intensity plus um, the intensity minus uh, the number of reps. Uh, plus, yes, yeah, sorry, it's the intensity plus the intensity times the number of reps. That number gives me like a number. So it's like, with, if, if you do like 80% by eight reps, that comes up to like something like 86%. And if I, if we don't have time today, but if I could show you all those values and you know about weight training, you'll see it made sense. It was just kind of this kind of aha moment and I came up with that equation. So then strength speed I, is a combination of the power and the strength uh, two calculations. And then speed strength is a combination of the pure velocity calculation and the power ca calculation. Yeah, and then uh, that's basically how I calculate those. So if, that'd be a whole nother class probably to go into that stuff, but. Uh, for now, you just got to trust me. Or on my website, I have six white papers that I published that shows all these calculations. And it's, if you're very inter in interested in exercise science, I think they're very interesting because I went through real methodically of like, I read this in this book, and I, and I read this in this book, and I built up my system of logic to come up with this calculation. Because the problem that I was running into when I wanted to implement a lot of the theories that I was reading in those books was how do you calculate it? I mean, it's a theory and it sounds right, but it's like if there's no mathematical formula, I can't put it in a spreadsheet, I can't implement it in training. So I started just getting very interested in like coming up with these actual, this actual system of applied mathematics to use all of that theory. So that's what, that's what this is, yep. So if you just, I'm gonna give you all access to this and you can just choose your method, let's choose your, and then just choose the ability. You have to go in that order and then it's gonna, if you just go in that order, it gives you the range to pick everything and I gotta choose light and then it's always going to end up with the ability that you had chosen see it's some, there's some overlap between like speed strength and so I picked power here and it gave me primary adaptation as speed strength but there's overlap between all of those power based abilities anyway so yeah any other questions I hope so nope okay well um any, you have any, any questions for me, Steve, or anything like that? Okay, thank you. Well, um, thanks everyone for listening, and um, take uh, those papers with you, and then if you want to contact me, you want to, you want to talk any more about it, you have further questions, my email is on there, my website is on there, my link tree is on there, and so I'm ready to talk to anybody about training anytime. <laughs> thanks a lot. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.